Hello my friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to Grace in My Space. Today we're doing a kitchen update as well as we're gonna start decorating the space. It has been four months without a complete kitchen. It's fine, we're fine. But I'm really excited to get back to decorating the space. It is my favorite room in our home. Kitchens are my passion for design. I love designing kitchens and so it has been a journey but I'm really excited for the progress that we've made. I'll give you a little kitchen update and we're gonna do some decorating and we'll show you how to decorate a kitchen without it feeling cluttered and impractical. So let's get to it. First step is the kitchen update. So if you have missed any of my previous videos, we had the island refinished after we had the floors updated because it no longer matched the finish of our new flooring. And while we had it removed and refinished, we decided to also extend the counter space. And we did that for mostly because our family is growing, not in number, no, 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 but in size. As my kids get larger and older, we were finding ourselves eating at the island like this, you know, it was it was difficult. Now we have extended it to almost 10 feet long and it's gonna provide us with a lot more comfort in seating at the kitchen island. Now, as you can see, we have the island back, we have the framing done, the templating has been done for the countertop and now we are just waiting on that final piece to come in, the countertop for the island and then we will be 100% done. This project has been in the works for four months. It was always supposed to take six weeks. It's okay. It's okay. It'll be worth it. We used the existing island cabinets and simply had that part refinished to this darker stain, which is called charcoal, and it is over maple. And so it gives it that really deep, rich wood tone that does not really pull red, which is what I really wanted to avoid. It is just a very great medium brown. And then we had the legs redone to a more modern square leg and extended the length of the island countertop about three feet. Now, while this update was not cheap because we ended up having to buy a new countertop, we did save some money by completely reusing all of the cabinet bases and not building new. So we've extended the length with a countertop, but not with cabinetry, which we didn't need the extra storage anyway, so it worked out great. And then we also refinished the shelving to match and painted the hood, which previously this was a wood accent, but I just wanted to calm down this side of the kitchen a little bit, and so we painted it all white. And now we're just waiting, waiting to be able to sit right here as a family of four and not be like this. Now, if you missed it, about a year ago, I did a kitchen renovation love and regrets video. And I talked all about the customizations that we did in this space, what I love still, and some of the things that I regretted. And I had a lot of feedback on that video. And so once this space is all fully put back together, I would love to do a response video to your comments and your questions. I will pop the video up here if you haven't watched it yet so that you can have some context and then stay tuned in a few weeks when the space is fully finished, we're gonna chat about those design regrets and what you thought about them. Let's talk shelving. I have a love of open shelves in kitchens. They are my favorite. I have done so many blog posts on open shelving. Number one, how to build your own kitchen shelving. Number two, the pros and cons of open shelling versus upper cabinets. I've also talked about just the variety of ways that you can customize a kitchen and how to decorate open shelves in a kitchen. So all of that's on my blog. If you are interested, I will link some of those posts in the description below. But right now, I wanted to show you some variety of ways that you can decorate open shelving in a kitchen so that it feels more artistic, a little bit more creative, a little outside the box for a kitchen space um, and see if you want to try it in your home. So I have this little teeny shelf over here. When I originally designed the kitchen, I had two in this space. And when we got them and when we were about to install them, the builder held it up and I was like, 
we just need one. Two feels cluttered to me. So we just stuck with one and I'm really happy that I did. Now I love adding art in a kitchen. It's a little bit unexpected and I really like the size of this art because it's not overwhelming, but it's just something that draws you in and it makes you want to come look at it because it's a really beautiful scene. You could leave it just like it is. You can add a crock. Perhaps a smaller crock. You could add really practical things like this is my salt container up on the shelf so you're still storing it, but it's a pretty accent. Or you can do kind of a dangly plant. Now this guy is fake because I don't get the best light in this corner because the sun would be blocked by the hood. So do what you can. Now I think that this would be really pretty, but this plant is definitely not gonna work. All I can see is the plant going up in flames. So let's imagine that it's like that, except better and not like that at all. Just a single plant, that would be cute. You could also do something like this where you are putting really practical things up there. Oh my gosh. Oh no, my picture. Oh no. Uh. culprit or maybe it was this guy I think I saved the painting the frame is questionable okay then well four years of leaning heavy cutting boards against my wall never had that happen of course it happens when I'm filming for you so I was about to say that it would be really fun to put um, a cool, fun cutting board up on that shelf. But now that we have experience with that situation, all I see is this falling and completely breaking my countertop. So that's not happening anymore. Maybe a lightweight one. Would work. There, that could be cute, except I don't like this. Let's take that out need something taller. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. So the lesson that we're learning today is that things don't always go as planned, but also things are really easy to just try. See if you like it. If it doesn't like it, pull it off. That didn't work, so pop something else up. But don't give up. Sometimes it's the cycle of five or six different items that you just have to see in the space in order to know if you like it. Playing with height variation, with texture variation, and with color variation as well can go a long way to create something interesting that's not really overdone, but also um, is just pretty to look at. Repetition, okay, that's heavy. Repetition is also a great way to decorate. So we've got a mortar and pestle over here and we have two here that I really love. Ooh, oh my gosh, that's so heavy. Makes a really fun statement. What next? Now I'm like super gun shy about my cutting boards being there. Second thing, utilizing under shelf or under cabinet space or behind the range or hanging from floating shelves or from upper cabinets. That is all very wasted space. And so I am going to try to utilize my space a little bit better, but I wanna show you a few different ways that you can do that. So this particular bar is part of a 14 piece set. Get on there. This is just an example, but it is made to go like so and hang all of your kitchen utensils on it. This is a matching set of 14 pieces. It's a beautiful set, but this is one way to do it. Like so for easy access, practicality. And if you buy a pretty set, then it's also beautiful. You can also use something like this for pots behind your stove. And that's one option. Another option 
is to do the same thing under here, like so. What I'm actually going to do, this set comes with two different types of hooks, that type. That shouldn't be hard. And it also comes with S hooks if you want to hang it underneath of something, which is what I plan to do. So I'm going to hang it under here and put my mugs on it like so. I am honestly nervous. This is a brand new shelf. It took them three times to get it right when they were refinishing it. And so if I ruin it now, it's all on me. All right, I just stood here for a good five minutes trying to decide if I actually want to drill a hole in my brand new shelves. Here's what we're gonna do. If you don't know if you're gonna like the way something looks, then I highly recommend utilizing your phone. Take your phone, set it up somehow, and hit record or um, hit burst or something to take a photo, but video works great because you're not having to try and mess with that part. And then fold the thing where you want it to be. Wait a second, so you can get a visual. And then take it down and go look at your recording or at your photo and see if you liked how it looked because this is how I do everything. If I don't have another person with me or a set of hands to hold it for me, now I can look at my phone and see if I liked it. All right, well, decided that was a no go. Not that I didn't like the bar, but it felt cluttered to have those things hanging down. So I'll save the bar for a time when perhaps I find something that I want to do with it in another spot, or maybe my taste will change for this kitchen next year, like it does every year. And I wanna use it somehow in the future. But for now, I just saved myself two holes in my brand new shelf. So let's play with some different ways to style shelving. I really like pop of art. A crock is always beautiful. Um, by the way, if you find broken crocks, just, turn them around and you'll be able to buy it for cheaper and no one will know. Where's her best side? Did you make me a hot dog? Oh, my hands are dirty. This hot dog was made in less than a minute. It took, it was so um, hot in there in less than a minute. Thanks buddy. And we made garlic bread and we had hot dogs. Good job. Proud of you. Thanks buddy. Lunch delivered. All right, look number one. It took some getting to, but we made it. Now this is a very stylized look. Almost nothing serves a practical purpose except for having the mugs easily accessible and my cooking utensils and what would have been my olive oil decanter. May she rest in peace. But otherwise, it's mostly for looks and I really actually love it. And I would probably leave it this way, except that I'm gonna show you some other options. So let's get to it. Now another option that I really like is using the groupings that I was speaking of earlier in decorating. So. Let's pop this baby up here. Ooh. He's heavy. Okay. Whew. And then this. And then this. These come down. This is a much simpler look. This guy can go back here and help hide my some electronics. These guys can swap over here. And we get more of that repetition of the mortar and pestles on both shelves. Now this is a much more like kitchen oriented look. We took out the artwork and we replaced it with something that is very practical in a kitchen. Even if you don't use it because it's an antique, it still fits a kitchen category. And we've kind of gained some more counter space as well. If you really need a lot of prep space, more of it's up high, but it's still pretty. And let me show you a trick. All of these cutting boards 
are strategically covering an outlet so that you're not looking at that instead of something pretty. Very easy to slide over when you want to use it and to slide back when you're done. Now, obviously you don't want cutting boards every two feet on your whole kitchen wall. Some are going to be exposed, no big deal, but where it makes sense, I do like to hide them. Now let's do one final look that is very practical. Last look we have here is having your everyday dishes out and easily take off, use, clean, put back. Obviously that makes it practical storage. And if you buy dishes that go with the overall aesthetic of your home or your kitchen, then it's also pretty at the same time. Whether or not you keep these other things down on your counter below or relocate them, totally up to you and what you need for your space. This is feeling a little cluttered for me after having no counter space for the last four months, so I'm probably going to rearrange which way do you think I am going to end up, which of the three, with the artwork, with the mortar and pestles up top, or as it is right now, with the plates and bowls. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. <laughs> Drop it in the comments and I will show you how it ends up in our final reveal video once we get the countertop back and when we do a little response on those kitchen regrets. I hope that this has given you some ideas, maybe a little bit of laughter along the way. Maybe you felt a little bad for me. It was a little bit of a rough experience. One thing though that is pretty cool, I had to take this out of the frame obviously to get the olive oil off of it. And on the back it says 1962, which I couldn't see before. So that's kind of a happy little accident that wasn't super happy, but we're gonna think glass half full but not a bottle of oil. Thanks for watching today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Make sure and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more to come. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the upcoming kitchen videos and more, and I will see you next time.